we are going to talk about spaces that are small but mighty and functional and fabulous. We're gonna talk about the laundry room, we're gonna talk about the bar, and we're gonna talk about a bathroom. We're talking function. But rooms that are small but mighty can't just be all about function, they also have to be fabulous. So I'm gonna tell you some of the tricks that I used to make these spaces look great. Let's start with the laundry. Everybody needs a good fluff and fold area, but not everybody has a ton of space. And when you're thinking about your laundry room, you might be wondering, where do I start? I always think that there is a decision that gets made that will inform everything else. In this case, I'd already selected the flooring that was gonna run throughout the mudroom. And I like a flooring surface that is consistent. So since it would be wrapping right into the laundry room, by default, I already had a design clue that would lead me on the path to the right palette. And I drew that from the floor. I thought, do I want white cabinets? No, I don't want this to be light and bright and fresh. I want this space to be a continuation of the moody feel that the mudroom palette already had. Stay with your design direction. Don't try and make a house that does something different in each and every room. What you always want is you want your home to feel consistent, cohesive, and you want it to flow from front to back, from top to bottom, inside and out. That's always my goal for every single project. So how did I do that in the laundry room? Well, I decided to start with the cabinetry. And this is really fun. I outfitted this laundry room with kitsch cabinetry. This is the groove profile. And what I like about this is, you know I love attention to detail. It's that little extra bit of design that elevates. So instead of this being a plain slab door, it has this zippy, snappy, contemporary groove detail cut right into it. I decided I wanted anything but plain white, so I went with Surf. It's sort of a gray-green tone. It's subtle, it's moody, it's deep, it's rich, it's natural. It looks fantastic as a contrast to the warm, cool neutrals of the stone floor. And I think it gives some personality to the space. So. Winner! What you'll see here is I stack the washer dryer because if you're short on space, stacking a washer dryer is a great idea. I also really like being able to just pull things directly out of the dryer and fold them instead of spending all my time bending over and getting it from underneath the counter. Now, some people have commented who watched the show and noticed, how do you reach the controls? Because they're up really high. So if you're thinking of stacking your washer dryer, make sure you consider where those controls are located and how high they are. Because if you are not super tall, you might need a little stool to reach them. But don't worry, I can reach them. All is good. So we've got a stacked washer dryer here, which makes the most of the space. Then I was able to sneak in an L-shaped counter because this is great for folding. I wanted to make sure we could have as much storage as possible because this is a rental house. Wherever possible, I want you to think about storage, whether it's for you or for a rental, you can never have enough storage. And the reason why I need lots of storage in a rental is we have to have multiple sets of everything. Lots of sheets, lots of towels, and this allows them to be washed and neatly tucked away and organized. So this is a good idea. Having an upper cabinet that's just right there at sort of eye level makes it also easy to store and make sure that when you're thinking about a laundry room that you leave enough space from the counter to the underside of the cabinets so that you've got room to move your arms when you're folding everything. Finishing details, think about how to connect one space to the next. We've got lots of wood accents in the mudroom area, so I chose unfinished walnut round knobs. Aren't these fabulous? They're really fun, and the texture of the wood lends that bit of softness, and these are from Lee Valley. Great thing is, you can order them online, and they have great prices and lots and lots of selection. I've always been a Lee Valley fan. What else can I tell you about? Oh, countertop. When it comes to countertop, if you have a patterned floor tile that's natural stone, you want to think about how to create that seamless connection between your counter and the floor. So really what I looked for was something that would match as close as possible. And this is a Caesar stone countertop and it really feels that it's just drawn from the tones, the texture, and the pattern of what we've used in our honed marble tiles on the floor. 
Last finishing touch in the laundry room is a backsplash. And this is the element that pulls the whole palette together. It's glossy and sharp, and the way I've installed it, look at these long tiles. And what I've done is I've installed a band of tile across the bottom, and then to finish it off, I don't really love cut tiles. So I'm always thinking, how can I make the best pattern using full tiles? So when you create a mix of horizontal and vertical, you can create something that doesn't need any cuts and that looks fabulous and flawless when installed. Just something to keep in mind. Okay, that's the laundry room. Where should we go next? Wanna stop at the bar? This is a small space, but this is what's fun about design. You've got a small space, I want you to think, how can you make the most of it? At one point in our layout, this was all bathroom, and I thought, mm, we don't need a bathroom that big. Let's steal a little space from the bathroom, let's give a little bit more to this bar. Let's center the door, and then we can create a double-sided bar that flanks the entry into this bathroom, and it will be fun, it will be functional, and I know it's gonna be a destination. Why? Because this bar is located right off the media room, adjacent to the door that leads out to our outdoor recreation zone, which has a hot tub and a sauna and a fire pit and all sorts of fabulous things. So I am certain this is going to be a major destination every day. So how do you pack the most punch possible into this little area? It's pretty simple. Think about what you need. A bar fridge. I always recommend a bar fridge with a glass front door. A, because it looks fun, you can have it illuminated, but B, also because it means that everybody can see exactly what's inside, and that is a real feature. You don't have to spend a fortune on a bar fridge. You can easily pick one of these up at your local big box store. Another thing to really make the bar work is you need to have a little sink and a dishwasher. If you can afford to, and if you have space to install a dishwasher, I highly recommend it because schlepping those glasses and everything from the media room or from the outdoor zone all the way to the kitchen, which in this house is on the second floor, that's not gonna be fun. So we prioritized putting in a dishwasher. Nobody's gonna be doing dishes here, but a little sink allows you to just dump out whatever's left in the glass and then load the dishwasher. Every choice matters. So when you're making your choices, I want you to look at the details. I also think when you're dealing with a small space, you want to have as much surface area clear as possible. So when it comes to your faucet, maybe try and find one that just has a single hole. This is not where you wanna have three holes drilled in your counter. You want something that's super easy just to wipe around. Let's talk about grab and go. In a rental house especially, but in any house where you have lots of visitors, people coming and going, I am always inclined to use open shelves so everybody can see exactly what they're looking for. Grab it, self-serve, go, move on, enjoy yourself, and then psst, put it in the dishwasher when you're done. The same type of cabinetry we used in the laundry room, we also used here in the bar. So this is the Kitsch Groove cabinetry once again, but we've done a different color. This is a gorgeous, deep, smoky charcoal. One of the best features of this cabinetry is it's scratch resistant, it is smudge proof, it doesn't show fingerprints and it's self healing. So this is a very durable material. If you're looking at getting matte finish cabinetry, I want you to look in the showroom. If the pieces in the showroom look grimy and gross and have fingerprints all over them, that probably is an indication about how your most high wear cabinets are gonna look at home. These are fabulous, I am a huge fan. Hardware is always a big finishing touch in terms of how you finish off any cabinetry or millwork, so always make sure you pay attention to that. And in this case, our open shelves are from the same company as our cabinetry. And what's fun is we added a little LED strip just underneath so it washes the wall with light. And the wall that we're washing with light, check it out, it's brick style tile. And what's awesome about this brick style tile is it's matte. It's chalky, it's super textural, and it really looks like white bricks from outside. Why do I like this? Well, the exterior of House Heidi, the house that this is located in, is stucco. So what I think is great, because this is right beside a door that leads outside, I like the fact that this feels like an indoor-outdoor material. And I always like being able to have that riff where you can sort of blur the boundaries. 
Last thing to keep in mind here, look at these counters. These are Caesar Stone counters, and if you're dealing with a small space solution, I want you to think about prioritizing your spend to get waterfall edge counters because they look fabulous. They are super functional and really, really durable. So when you think about how many people are gonna go through this little slot to get in and out of the bathroom all the time, I feel like it's gonna be a high traffic area and I just really believed that putting a waterfall counter down both sides would deliver durability and practicality for the long haul, but also it looks snazzy right now. Now let's talk about the bathroom. Okay, hop in here. This is what I call the spa bathroom because this bathroom services our outdoor rec areas. So I wanted this to be something that was what did I want this to be? I wanted this space to be sort of more of a masculine palette. I wanted to embrace black and white and natural tones. And I wanted it to have an indoor, outdoor feeling. And I wanted it to have a mountain riff. So first, first favorite thing, let's talk about the mountain riff. Let's talk about this little pattern that we installed in the shower stall because you know I love whimsical elements, things that make it fun, things that add that little bit of extra care, that bit of extra personality, and that just deliver a sense of unique design. Try to find things that allow you to explore unique design at home. So these are parallelogram tiles. There's a left side and a right side. When you put them together, it creates a tip cut chevron. Sure, you can do that. But what you can do instead is you can decide how many lefts and how many rights you use. So I decided to combine one stripe of pale gray within an overall field of glossy white tip cut chevron tiles and I created this subtle mountain riff. Do you like it? Tell me in the comments. I personally love it and it was super fun. Other fun things, because if you're looking at this and thinking, why do you have two shower heads side by side? This bathroom is right beside the door to outside. So people are gonna be coming in from the hot tub and they may just want a rinse off. When our kids were little and they would jump in the lake, they'd come in cold, a bunch of kids would go into the shower together in their bathing suits and have a rinse off. So I thought it would be a great idea to have a double shower in here. These are just easy, ready to go systems that I picked up at a big box store. And when you have a shower this size, why not have two shower heads? the more the merrier. We have two shower heads and we have two hand showers in here. Look at the floor. Pebble flooring is polarizing. Some of you love it. Some of you say, oh, I would never do that. As a person who has pebble floor installed in a couple of different showers, I have to tell you, I am a huge fan of pebble floor. It's like a built-in foot massage, people, come on. A built-in foot massage. Minister of Exteriors is telling you it feels like a built-in foot massage. It does. Part of the reason why this pebble floor mosaic works perfectly for this bathroom is because the aforementioned indoor outdoor area, people will be coming in soggy and slippery wet from the hot tub, which means a lot of water I think is gonna get tracked into this bathroom. Here's where Practical Sarah steps in. I don't want somebody slipping and falling. And when you have these small pebbles, you've got lots of grout. So that provides lots of traction. Nobody's gonna slip. And it also references, it has that kind of nod to an indoor outdoor feel. Does it work for you? Works for me. All of my favorite things in this bathroom are the things that are different, the things that are unique and the things I've never done before. And I hope when you do a design project, that's how you feel. Let's look at this mirror. There was an existing window and the idea of closing up an existing window to just cover it over didn't feel right to me. So I decided that instead we would put in an acid etched piece of glass and then hang the mirror on the window. What's really amazing about this is later in the day when the sun moves around, it streams through the trees and the leaves and it creates this gorgeous pattern around the mirror. This is the thing about design. You get to make your own rules. You get to try things that work. The window was located exactly where I knew we needed the sink to be and the mirror to be. So this is my riff on how do I take what I've got and how do I make it work? I think it works. When you look at the vanity, I decided to go big and chunky for the countertop. So I designed this to have a six inch apron on the counter. And really, 
you can make it as big as you want. When you're custom ordering countertops, this is a Caesar Stone countertop, and it has a fabulous natural palette on it. And look at this, it's got a laser sharp mitered edge, one leg, and it's really just an L-shaped counter. It doesn't return on the far side. This is an asymmetrical vanity. That's what I wanted, that's what I decided to do, and I ran with it. It's fun. What else is fun? Big hardware. Go big or go bold with your hardware, especially if you're just doing cabinet doors. When you're doing cabinet doors, my riff on how do you take in stock, ready to go, affordable cabinet doors and turn them into something that looks a little more special, spend some money on the hardware. These are pyrite knobs that I ordered through Anthropology. I like shopping there for my clothes and they often have some really fun hardware. When it comes to mounting the hardware, if you want it to look more like a piece of furniture, think about putting that handle right in the middle of the door frame. That way it looks more like a credenza or a cabinet and less like a piece of kitchen cabinetry. Okay, those are my favorite things. Let me know what you think, add a comment below. Make sure you hit the bell to turn on notifications so you won't miss our next video. Thanks for joining me.